guys, welcome to another stream. I'm Kambi from Stuck in Attic and today I'll be doing some animation cleanup on some really dark and creepy music. And I'm doing that because uh, I want some inspiration for our last scene of the game where we'll, we'll need some kind of this type of music. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna listen to creepy, creepy, creepy dark music, atmospheric music. Uh, throughout the stream and then after the stream I'm gonna start trying to make something like this so well um, yeah I hope you're feeling jolly because today's stream is going to be really dark really dark um, so what I'm going to animate today is um, a special animation animation for Kide and I just got the raw from Livio and I'll show you guys Just a tiny thing if we're working on animation. I'm just going to make the screen a bit bigger so that you guys can see better my, hmm, my screen. So, uh, one second. Just wanna adjust the size of my screen. So, here we are. I think this will do. Maybe slightly smaller. Yeah. There we go. Hey, people, all. Welcome to the stream. How are you? I think the music may be a bit too loud. I'm gonna turn it down a bit so you guys can hear me. Okay, so let's check out the animation. Here it is. Such a cute animation. How cute is that? Uh, let's see it again. There we go. Now I want a GIF after this and I want to post it online because it's just so great. Even when she does this. I think we could use this as an idle animation for Kitty. Don't you think so, Livio? What? Can't hear me. So that part at the end, I said we could use that for an idle animation. Special either for oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sometimes. I think it would be awesome. Because uh, we've got uh, these sorts of idle animations for Buzz in the game. I don't know if you guys seen them. Uh, it's when you stay too long on a screen and you don't do anything. He just starts uh, messing with his phone or something. And uh, Kitty starts uh, trying to catch flies and she's um, washing herself and now she could even do a little bit of a stretch because she's been humanized. So yeah, why not stretch her fingers? Even though she doesn't have opposable thumbs. Such a cute animation. Okay, so to start this animation, I'll just keep the kitty layer active so that I don't draw too much on, I, I mean too many drawings on the same layer. So I'm not confused. And I need to go to my palette. Import. I need to go to Kitty and import the Kitty bullet. There we are. Oh, okay. And uh, I don't know why my computer is so slow today. I guess. I don't have any other open software. I guess it's just slow. Okay. So uh, I'll just move stuff around so that I can work better. Okay, so I'll zoom in on Kitty so we can see the details very well and I'll turn on the light skin and I'll start with the fur line. Whoops. I think the the weight of the line is just right and I'll just start drawing her eyes. Now for this frame I could uh, I could go to a different file and uh, copy the exact frame from Kitty's Idol but I don't actually need to do this because this is such a fast animation and uh, it's gonna be okay. But what I could do so that it doesn't jump around I could just start from this frame and not draw the first frame because this is going to be her idol and then she's gonna start from this this frame. Hope that makes sense to you guys. And 
while I'm working, I'm gonna pay extra attention to the music and see the instruments they use, I mean instruments, the sounds they use and the order in which they use them and the progression of the chords so that I can do something of this kind myself for our game. Now for the paws, since they are in front of the higher part of the leg, I'm going to draw them before so that the lines come behind them. And I'm gonna fill them with color and continue with the outline. I really love the choir. I really love the choir here, how subtle it is. I've used that a couple of times in our songs too. Even though it's a digital, digitally created choir, it's not recorded by real people. If you put some reverb on it, it sounds pretty awesome. It makes everything so dramatic. So I'm definitely gonna use that. already have two frames and for the third one she's already jumping around and here so that I make my work a bit more efficient I'm just gonna do her tiny pause and go to the next frame and draw them here in space I'm gonna continue with the drawing because otherwise I have to look for the pause and scroll up and down the image but if it were in the same place it would be more efficient just to draw the same the items with the same color on all the frames and then go back to another color rather than change it throughout and find the appropriate color I mean, here it's not such a big problem because we only have a couple of colors, several colors, colors, but we have characters with 20 or 30 colors, and those are kind of hard to find. Okay, let's uh, let's find a new song. So I really like this one. Good for inspiration. Um, Okay, I'm gonna continue with this soundtrack because it's pretty cool. Okay, and back to this frame, I'm gonna color the pause and continue with the outline. Yeah, 
the key to making animations fast is not to erase too much of what you're doing. So try to have your work, you just need to turn the volume down, as correct as you can from the first try. Because if you're starting to erase the lines, then you waste so much time. And as you can see, I'm not hurrying the lines. I'm taking the time to make them straight and nice, but I'm not erasing anything. So. Trying to make this as time efficient as possible. Not the lines. Sorry, Lika? You're not hurting the lines? Huh? You're not hurting the lines. I'm not hurrying the lines. I don't know if that's that's never heard That's uh, something I can use but people get it. People get it. I'm inventing new expressions. <laughs> Hey Babushka, welcome to the stream. And the tail. Now here I went a bit outside the line, so I'm gonna modify it, but I'm not doing that very often. So we have four frames. Wow, I love this instrument, this is so cool. And this sounds like one of my tracks with <laughs> bells. We have some childhood issues with olden bells and musical boxes in my, in my music. They just sound so creepy. If you want to go dark and creepy, I think the, the easiest way is just to use innocent sounding instruments like this and go with something ambiguous and everything will be so creepy rather than just use very distorting sounding instruments because it's about the contrast it's about the contrast and yeah one of one of the few other important lessons i learned in college that really helped me uh, besides that thing I used to tell you guys about, uh, don't go with the first uh, the idea you have. So any first ideas you have about anything, trying to find a creative solution to something, they're probably bad, so you should dismiss them and try to find a different idea. So that was one of the first lessons I got. And the second is that if you want a more powerful effect on something, like if you want a character to portray anger, don't make him shout, make him whisper, and that's so much, so much creepier. Because, you know, shouting and doing stuff like that, it's, it's overdone and it doesn't convey that emotion anymore. But when you do the exact opposite of what people expect you to do, then it's creepy because you become unpredictable and that's the scariest thing ever, right? When you don't understand the people around you or the world around you or their next action, that's very creepy. childhood one yes of course of course and I really love how simple the music is and yeah that's one other thing people don't know how to use just moderation in everything because when you overdo something it starts to become bad so more is not necessarily better and the simpler the things are usually the most effective or efficient they are and I think I should add a bit of a butt here yeah so let's see And that's kitty animation for you. Okay, and back to the other frames. Now, what else should I tell you guys? One of the other hints, tips for today 
got a lot of tips for today is that when you're drawing characters and you want to portray 3D space, you should use overlapping lines like this. So what happens when I'm using this overlapping line over that? That means this object is in front of the other object. And that creates depth in your drawings. And you definitely want that if you're working with 2D images. You want them to look 3D. So you have to use as many overlapping lines as you can. And that's one of the reasons Kitty's outline is a different color than her body. Which if, if it were the same color as her body, you can use that and the shapes wouldn't make sense all the time. the soundtrack we're listening to. soundtrack because I think it's very in tune to our the mood, like the, the mood in our game and can't stress enough, enough how important inspiration is when you're trying to do something creative so for all of you who are artists out there don't be afraid to get inspiration and that's not stealing Stealing is actually a good thing. Copying is a bad thing, so you don't want to copy other artists. That sucks, but when you get inspiration from them and then you use what they've done and mix it with other stuff you like and create something original, that's very good. And when you understand the principles that they use and why you like what they've done and what makes it work and what makes it doesn't, what makes it to not work, then you can create pretty good stuff yourself. So when I start a new track, for example, I never, never, never create in a vacuum. I always listen to some other piece of music that, that I liked and that inspired me and try to see what they've done. And even though in the end it doesn't look at all like, it doesn't sound at all like the piece that inspired me, it's just something to to use as an anchor for your creativity. Because the scariest thing you can have in any creative art is just that blank, that blank piece of paper or that blank piece of music, you know, like the ability to do anything at all. And that just is, it's so scary and it's uh, paralyzing because when you can do anything, you don't know where to start. So if you can anchor yourself in something concrete, then it's awesome. Hey Flimsy Hand, welcome to the stream! How are you Flimsy Hand? We're listening to creepy music and drawing cute cats. Isn't that the best combination possible? Let's check out the animation again for the new people. Oops. Here it is. It's 
生气演走了吗 ？I just love how much character Livy puts in every every kitty pose and every kitty frame. She's got so much personality everywhere. She's lovely. Drink some more tea. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But I'm sure he was pretty convinced. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so the funniest thing, guys. Man, but why I'm telling the story? I'm just gonna put my headphones aside for a bit because it's so hard for me to speak on a normal volume with that creepy music behind. Yeah, so yesterday when we were just ready to go to work, um, the 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 woman that makes that cleans up our apartment building. Uh, knocks our door and she asks us if we didn't lo lose a cat because there was a ginger tomcat loose in the apartment building and uh, he was actually stuck somewhere in a very tight space uh, near a window and leave you managed to get him out of there but uh, then we couldn't figure out if if he lives in the apartment building or and calling for us Yes, I think he's louder than me. <laughs> so when Livy opens the door, that Tomcat just rushes in our apartment. So just, so I, I guess he was, his apartment was somewhere in that building because he was so secure and just walking into that that door, he might have thought he's back at home or something. And uh, in the moment when he enters our apartment, our Tomcat, which is actually neutered, he doesn't, he doesn't really have the I don't know, the hormones associated with male cats that are so aggressive and he's always so chill and so and so tame and he never 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 says like he's very gentle, he's a very gentle tongue cat and he starts making this weird sound like oh my god it's, it's like never heard before and I thought he, he was going to jump and attack this other tongue cat but luckily leave you <laughs> grabbed the the foreign cat fast enough so that ours didn't attack him but man the noises he started to make and even after he left the apartment he was just yelling and he was grabbing my leg with his claws and he was doing man so that was really really funny really really funny yeah, I don't remember why I started telling you guys the story oh yeah it's about cats with personality yes, cats are weird Cats are weird. So in the end, we just uh, put up some some notes on on the doors in the apartment building, telling people that if they found that if they lost a cat, uh, it's in the apartment building. And the, and the cleaning lady said she will, she was going to leave him in the apartment building until someone comes and picks him up. And he wasn't there when we got home, so I guess he found his parents 
I really hope so. But he was very tame and Livio took him in his arms and he was purring and he was very happy so he wasn't wild at all and as I said he just rushed into our, into our home so I guess he must have thought it was his. I think he got lost. I really hope he's okay but we'll ask the cleaning lady when we'll meet her again. And then after that, after that incident, our cats, because we have two cats, just started fighting each other and they were so angry and pissed off at each other. I don't know why. I don't think they, they knew why either. They were just so angry. But I never thought our Tomcat was so, so, so aggressive. The sounds he made were so loud and oh my god, scared the shit out of me. Michael, welcome to the stream. How are you? Yeah, anyway, so back to my discussion about art and inspiration. It's really important to understand why things work and what function they have. And when you're able to understand these things and you can use them effectively anywhere and I think that's the most important thing to do when you're listening to music or watching drawings to understand why do you like something what works what doesn't why is this music scary why is it uplifting what makes it sound good what makes it sound bad when you start to understand these things so easier to start being creative and apply them. It's like cooking, for example. Like, I never follow recipes exactly as I read them because I often don't have the ingredients, all the ingredients, or I don't have the measuring cups or stuff like that. But I try to understand what the role of each each specific ingredient is, and then I can just improvise and just replace one for the other, and not worry about. Uh, just strictly following the, the steps of the recipe because I know why that recipe works and I know the function of each ingredient is and then I can just do my own stuff as I like it. You know, and it's the same with art, it's the same with music, the same with any science, any field, <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so I was reading a book about, uh, it's a Richard Feynman's book, um, it's about his life. I don't know if you guys know him, he's a very famous physicist and he got the Nobel Prize for the advancements he made in physics, especially in quantum physics, and he was such a character, such a great guy, like, he's a, no, he's, he's the prototype of genius boy, you know, really, really good at science, but he was also such a lady man and he was always in bars, hook, hooking up with strippers and um, he was very sociable and he did so many things. He was a mu musician once and he was a painter once and he did all this crazy stuff, like stuff you wouldn't expect from, from hardcore physicists who just devote their entire life to one field. He just tried them all. And he has a book about all his life experiences that is very, very funny. And I think it's one of my favorite books that I've read ever. I just laughs so hard at each of his stories. And he's such a crazy man. I, I completely love him. And he tells about the story when he goes to Brazil to, to be a teacher for a couple of months there. And he's amazed at the fact that in Brazil nobody learns physics nobody because nobody understands anything so all the all the students just learn sentences from these physics books 
and they can they can quote each each of the, those sentences correctly and they have very good grades and they pass their exams successfully but when he asks them asks them the same problems but uh, in like with real examples like instead of i don't know instead of a i don't know what type of medium he says what happens if you do that in water they cannot they cannot make the connection and give the right the right uh, uh, answer because they have no idea why stuff works in the real life and he's amazed at that and he says that that's why there's there are no physicists from brazil in that time maybe now they are it's because nobody teaches them this sort of things and it's exactly how we learn everything we learn in school so you just you just learn by heart some sentences that make no sense to you and don't understand any 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 connection with the real world and once you're able to do that then you just magic happens and you just start to be able to be creative and do stuff of your own so like for him the example he gives it's that he's He's very bad at these abstract thoughts, but he always like he has a very good understanding of what things are and how they relate to the physical world. And he always thinks by example. And when other guys, you know, try to understand the math behind very complicated thing, he just tries to think of that. How would that work in the real world? And he automatically thinks that um, uh, that couldn't be right because uh, his intuition tells him it shouldn't be right. And then other guys spend days and days doing the math and figure out that, yeah, it can't work because the math is wrong. But he knew that instantly because he can, he can relate it to real world examples. And yeah, it's the same, it's the same with art and music and everything. And cooking. <laughs> I don't know about physics, I'm not a physicist, but I know about cooking and you know, making music so important to understand everything and never use something that you don't I mean when you're learning just admit that you don't know what something is and just ask silly questions until you get it Hey, Biroka, welcome to the stream. Yeah, and another thing he said about those Brazilian guys, okay, back to hearing my voice again, is that nobody was willing to admit that they don't understand those simple th things because they had this sort of a ego, ego boosting mentality in which, I don't know, anyone who asks a silly question is look frowned upon and everyone claims they understand stuff that they don't and they are too afraid to ask no. what they I don't. don't know because that would make them look silly so in the end you have these highly trained scientists who don't understand anything because they want to claim that they do understand stuff and they're too afraid to ask the simple stuff and that's plain stupid and unfortunately something that happens at least in Romania a lot in our schools and nobody believe is making strange noises and nobody really makes you understand stuff and the connection between stuff all you have to do is learn by heart everything and then you forget what you've learned in two weeks and then you go to school for nothing because you don't know anything. And that's so sad. It's really sad. But anyways guys, I, re I totally recommend that book for anyone interested in autobiographies or scientists. Or, I know even if you are if you are a fan of the Big Bang Theory, just see how a real life scientist, uh, what the life is of a real human working in physics, and he's actually from Pasadena too, and working at Caltech, 
who was teaching there. And he's such an amazing man. And that book is the best. That, that book is the best. And it's called Surely You're Dork. <laughs> Sorry, Surely You're Joking, Mr. Feynman. Whoa. Awesome book. That was weird. What? So, hey guys, hey everyone. Hey. So you know my mom had her cataract operation yeah. on her eyes. And she just went to the doctor. He said that something very, very weird happened in the sense that usually when once you get the operation, it just mm -hmm. stops the process of the of your eyesight getting worse and just stays there. Mm -hmm. And in the case of my mom, I mean in her case, her eyesight actually improved by 80%. Oh my god. She said that's the, never happened. Like the plus or the minus sign? No, her eyesight, like the the you know the the, the quality of her eyesight actually improved 80%. Which is not supposed to happen. But it's awesome. I don't know. That's <laughs> so weird. So she sees well without glasses? She, yeah. They, I mean, not without glasses, but yeah, she actually had to change her glasses mm -hmm. because they were hindering her. 80%. It wasn't supposed to happen. So there you go. <laughs> she, the doctor can't explain it. So. But. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, that's good news. Happy for a moment. The music is actually uh, not ours. You, you, I don't know why you said things. Oh, oh yeah, for your mom. Sorry, I just I thought you said things for the music. The music is uh, for inspiration because, uh, as I said before, I need to make the final scene soundtrack soon, and that has to be really, really, really scary and um, has to be a bit different from the music I've made so far. And. I want it to be a lot more creepier, darker, and more atmospheric. So less real instruments, less melodic lines, and more, more of this creepy ambient stuff. And um, yeah, I said uh, this stream I'm going to listen to a lot of tracks and uh, get some inspiration. And after the stream, I'm gonna start trying to make make some music. No, I don't listen. Actually, unfortunately, I never listen to music anymore. So I'm so so busy all the time and when I do have the time to listen to something it's usually books and I haven't been listening to music for a long time but I know Olivia you like Vangelis a lot and um, Jean-Michel Jarre I don't know who that is no but I will give it a search after the stream Oh, that sounds really, really, really interesting. I, I will definitely listen to it. Sounds pretty cool. now why not let's see
Thanks for the link, Babushka. Let's check out the animation again. Oh, I really like that progression. Job for you because you're doing the hardest part here. Hey, this is fun too. I'm enjoying it. You get to listen to music and uh, talk about books and hang out with these awesome people. It's actually, Liv, you should say thanks because I'm only doing the line art. But uh, in the name of the team, thank you. Yes, and I really love uh, the ending part of it when she stretches. So check this out. She's so cute. Yeah, just a stretch there. <laughs> Creepy and weird. It's not actually creepy, it's just weird. Creepy was the wrong word. It's funny, creepy. And that's even a thing. by playing intervals of sound, of sound vibration. And if you think about the physics of it, it's crazy. It's just... Just some vibrations that are playing at different frequencies in a certain order, and that makes you feel happy or sad or depressed or, I don't know, enthusiastic. And that's just crazy to me. And I've been reading a lot to find out if it's if it's a um, thing we're born with or if it's uh, a, an environment uh, result, I mean the result of education. And what I found out is that it's both and it's because in the past um, it's probably people who had um, a, uh, an affinity to music had more chances to survive than the other people. So that's why we evolved with with the sense of music. Because no, no other animal has this ability to perceive music, but we do, and we do it even at birth. So, like infants, if you play the music, they can tell if something sounds right or not, and that has nothing to do with education. That's just your genes, and you already, when you're born, you already have that ability to appreciate the music, and it's just so amazing. But then, like you have this raw, this raw ability towards intervals that sound harmonious and good. But uh, the actual type of music that you start enjoying when you grow up, it's the result of your education and uh, the stuff you're exposed to when you're a kid. It's like with language. When you when you're an infant, you perceive all the sounds. The human language, all the sounds the same. But then after after a couple of months, then just then you stop hearing the sounds that are not in your language. And then when you grow older, you even lose the ability to reproduce them or perceive them. So when you're born, you have so much, so much potential for everything, and then everything starts to, starts to cut out, and uh, you're only left with what you're using. Uh, and with the music you like, it's actually, I think, one of the explanations of why 
music makes you feel this way is because you s while listening to a lot of music, when you develop, you start to associate different chords with different um, conclusions. So you think that if this is in this scale, it should end like that. And when, when that happens, you feel a sense of pleasure. And uh, it's, not not, it's not something that you get by birth, it's something that, uh, that is acquired in your environment. So probably if you would bring a Renaissance man today in today's world and play him some modern music, I don't think he could appreciate it because all the modern chords and resolutions are something that we have been exposed to and started to appreciate, but it's not something that's in our genes. But he's like even a caveman would still appreciate uh, a good a good sounding interval. But it's not the same with the actual chords progression. So that's really interesting. Music, music is interesting. Human race is interesting. And stretch. There we go. Oh, cool, yeah. Oh yeah, Spotify is coming to Romania. Liv is really excited. Oh, that's that's such a cool concept, Babushka. What what was the book called? Oh, I want to read that book. It sounds interesting. <laughs> Do you remember the name of it? find it I'll Google it or something. Sounds pretty interesting. Oh cool. Thank you. Any book recommendations you got, guys, please let me know because I'm always looking out for good books and I'm reading a lot and yeah, I appreciate any ideas. to think about what evolutionary advantages people with musical skills had in prehistory because otherwise we wouldn't I mean if there weren't any we wouldn't have this huge inclination towards music right so there must have been something really really important there that helped people survive and it's so funny to, to speculate to think about what what that might be I know I read in a book that some of it is like when people, it, it helps people coordinate in large groups. So let's say if you want to work something and you, if you do that to, to some music, people can 
very easily coordinate their actions and work together as, as, a, as a group. And especially like if they would be fighting a battle, and there would be a large, a very large group of people trying to fight other people, it would really help if they could coordinate their movements and march towards the opponents playing something that sounded really, really badass and they could scare their opponents off and then they would spread their genes and survive and <laughs> it could be some evolutionary advantage to that. Or maybe they could court girls and they would fall in love with the more musical people and then those people would spread their genes and survive. Or they would play music all night when they were watching watching the other the other group sleep and protecting them from threats and uh, they would survive. So it's really, it's really fun to think and speculate <laughs> what sort of advantage music had. Maybe it's just because it's nice and it makes our life happier. Who knows? Music, Babushka. Thank you so much. But I'm gonna go back to my previous soundtrack because, uh, as I said, I want some inspiration for the dark, atmospheric stuff I want to write later. And this is too happy. This is too happy for inspiration. So cool. I will bookmark, bo uh, bookmark that, and I will listen to it later. So back to our our creepy soundtrack, atmospheric stuff. Listen to that track I liked. Where is it? This one. So creepy. Let's jump back to where we left. This one is really good.
to move faster with this animation. Man, I really love this track. Going good. It's going kind of slowly. I just want to promote the journey down a little bit. So <laughs> just, just, just stand here for a while. Yeah, journey down. Awesome game. Mm -hmm. Awesome guys. They just launched their game. Great Third. Swedish people making great Swedish games. Yeah. Quiet. <laughs> Swedish, Swedish people are all nice. I mean, I don't know many of them, but the ones I know, they're all very cool and nice. Especially flimsy. Especially flimsy. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad we didn't make it to this Sweden mm, game. It's conference. fine. It would have been such a hassle. Yeah, and Sweden is way, way too expensive for us. Yeah. Like going to Sweden on a even holiday or, or even you know work related stuff with. With an Eastern European budget, is a pretty much going anywhere with an Eastern European budget. Yeah, but especially Sweden because I think it's especially one of the most Sweden, expensive yeah. countries. Yeah. So coming, don't forget about the whiskers and no, stuff. No, no, I'm gonna add them. Oh, I love her expression. I'm gonna add them on a different layer so that they don't. Um, it's it's easier like that. But I love this track so much. It sounds a bit like Nine Inch Nails here. Don't know why. The piano progression. Such a huge fan of Nine Inch Nails. And I always listen to them in the autumn, it's funny. Just when summer ends, I just get this urge to listen to Nine Inch Nails. Because they're so sad and, I don't know, so intense. And I get sad that summer is over. Summer is over, but now, at least here, it's like spring is back. It's been so hot. It's like summer temperatures around here now. And uh, man, it's so beautiful outside. It's just full of trees uh, with yellow leaves, and they're falling from the trees and floating in the air. It's just lovely, completely lovely. I'm just so sad that I can't stay outside longer and enjoy the good weather. It's just lovely. Human, nice people and nice, very nice people in the spiritual sense. Here of the mouth, I need to make a new color. And I'm gonna make like a pinkish color. Tried to paint in acrylics, by the way. <laughs> it was such a disaster. Oh my god, what a complete disaster it was. 
but I had so much fun. So I could imagine myself trying that a couple of years ago. I think I would have been so depressed and discouraged and I'll say that I'm no good and I'm gonna give it up and I'm never gonna be able to paint. But now, it was so bad, it was actually funny, really. So it was, I could just take a step back and laugh at myself how bad I am at painting in acrylics. And honestly, I was laughing out loud while painting and had so much fun because I realized like after a couple of strokes that this was no good and it's not going anywhere, it's not going on any walls, it's going to be just a mess. So I just had fun with it and experimented and thought what happens if I do this and what happens if I do that and just played around and it was a complete mess in the end. I wasn't discouraged, I'm so eager to try again and uh, it was fun. So yeah man, it's so important to have the right attitude and if I had that a couple of years ago when I started drawing, I would have been a much happier person now and a much better artist because I wouldn't have wasted so much time feeling sorry for myself that I'm no good and I have no talent and blah blah blah. No, I just if you want to do stuff, you just have to do stuff. And don't focus on the results, just focus on doing it. Yeah, so it was a mess. And the um, thing is, I have no idea uh, of the medium. I have no idea how much water to use or... Like, I've approached it like watercolors and I used to put a lot of color, oh, sorry, a lot of water in the color and everything was just so washed up and my whole paper was a mess and was starting to wave around even though it was really thick acrylic paper. Um, so I think, I think I should use more color and less water. I have no idea because you now it's a new medium and there are so many rules that I have no clue about so nobody ever told me anything. And again, I'm a self-thought artist, I've never been to school have no clue about these things, no clue whatsoever. But yeah, I'm sure I'm gonna get the hang of it. So I've been watching some tutorials, they don't say, like, they, they mainly explain if they are for beginners, they just explain beginner, how to render a form, a 3D form for beginners, but you know, I already know that because I'm painting digitally, so I know the principles of drawing. I don't know the actual medium related stuff for beginner, beginners, like what brushes you should use and what paper and how much water and how you should apply it and stuff like that and I didn't really find tutorials on that but I'm sure I'm gonna I'm gonna get the hang of it but yeah well that, that's that's mainly my experience with it I had a lot of fun and I was very pleased to find out that uh, I'm not so young and foolish anymore and I don't get discouraged uh, if I fail I can just laugh at myself I'm not taking myself so seriously anymore and uh, that's fun that that makes life fun, you know, just stop being so focused on the results and uh, I don't know what people think of you or what you think of yourself or what you think you should achieve or I don't know how good you think you should be at something. Just do what, whatever you can do, do your best and don't focus on what you want to be, just focus on what you are. <laughs> yeah, so That's my life advice for any young artist trying to learn how to draw. It's gotta be fun. I know Livy used to tell me that a lot. It's gotta be fun. And couldn't couldn't make it fun because I was too too obsessed about making it look good and uh, I don't know, proving to myself that I can do it and um, it took me a very long time to get over that and have the right spirit, the right attitude for learning. And in the end Guys, that's the most important thing. It's not about the talent, it's not about any special abilities you have, it's about the attitude. If so you had the right attitude, you will keep going and you... Man, it's so hard to hear myself. You will get through failure and you will learn from that and it's gonna be great, you won't be discouraged. But with the wrong attitude, you could be like the most talented person ever and if you, if you I don't feel like giving up every time you don't succeed, then... You're not gonna get anywhere. Yeah. Oh, Babushka. Yeah, so send them to me if, <laughs> if you want. So please send them to me. I've been watching some tutorials online too. Um, mostly I just. So, hey, that, that light. 
So YouTube constantly recommends oil painting. I think that's a bit different than acrylics. And uh, I only found like two or three artists that uh, worked in acrylics and they explained what they did and I liked how they painted. But please, please, <laughs> please send them to me, yeah. Yeah, so cool. So I, I totally encourage you digitally. Is, is, in my opinion, the best environment to learn because, first of all, if you once you buy your supplies, once you buy your tablet and the software, like any amount of drawings you make, it's gonna be free. So when I'm trying to learn to draw traditionally, I just think that I know it's a stupid thought, but I think, man, these paints were expensive and this paper was expensive. I don't want to mess it up, so I'm have this this I don't know, mindset that, that I want to make something nice because I don't. It's here, it's in my hand, and it has to, I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna store it later and I don't want to tear it up so I want to have a good result and that's a stupid thing because you set some expectations and then you're going to be, uh, I don't know, stressed out that it doesn't look good and at every wrong stroke you cannot do, you're gonna be stressed out that you're messing out in the painting and that makes you want to experiment less so that's that's pretty bad but digitally you can experiment, experiment as much as you want and I don't know, you can just delete uh, delete everything once you're done and <laughs> go over, get over it and start a new one and that's just great. Plus having having all the colors and stuff at your disposal to choose to choose from it's much more easier than mixing the colors and knowing how much colors to mix and getting the right color or if you want to go back to a specific thing while painting uh, achieving the same color as before you know? so yeah if you if you're just interested in drawing and not using color then maybe uh, it's a bit easier to do traditionally because you get a lot more control on paper than you do at least for me I feel that I get a lot more control on paper than I do on the Cintiq with drawing and inking but with painting I feel that I can do much more stuff just because I can blend colors anytime that I want to and um, I can choose any colors that I want at any point and add highlights or fill very big areas of color and it's a, it's a bit easier. Now with the drawing, again, digitally it's so good that you can, that you can undo if you've done a mistake and do it again and do it right because when you're drawing on paper if you keep on erasing the paper can get all messed up and then even if you have a good drawing you have so many lines and so many other crap on that paper that makes it look bad so from that point of view it's easier to do to do it uh, digitally but it's fun to try to draw on paper too because it makes makes you be much more confident and secure with each stroke of line and like when, when you know you can't undo it makes you try harder and sometimes if you do that often enough you'll get more more confident in, in your line and sketching oh thank you <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy so I, I feel like I'm talking crap. So please, guys, let me know what you what you want to talk. Like if you, if yeah. So if if, if you feel this stream is inspiring, then I'm so happy with that because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> yeah, drawing digital is, is is really great, and having the technology to do that, it's so awesome. And I am so happy I'm living in this time and age on Earth. So it's so amazing. Yeah, actually ink is not that expensive, but you know, if you want to draw in colors, those are so, so expensive, really expensive. And the Cintiq is expensive too, yeah, but once you buy it, it's yours and you can make money out of it. <laughs> so, hey, Old Rod KS, um, so it looks like a pixel explosion. Um, what what uh, what resolution resolution are you working on uh, on in Photoshop? Um, and what brushes are you? So you should first try to find some good quality brushes, 
because in Photoshop, if you just use the, the basic brushes, those smooth and sharp ones, they just look awful, and any drawing you'll do with them, I mean, it's gonna end up looking awful. So I really, really highly recommend finding a set of nice brushes, and you can find, like, you'll find sets, you'll find free stuff on the internet a lot. And there are hundreds and hundreds of, br of brushes in one set, so you need to find a couple of them that you really like, and you need to do to find one for sketching, find one for inking, find one for I don't know adding color, and those are your favorite, and they have to be really good, and those will give a lot of personality to your drawing. And if you want your drawing to look good, first you have to find the brushes, and you have to work at a pro a pro appropriate re uh, resolution, because maybe. You're just working on a too small resolution. If you see the pixels, you shouldn't sh shouldn't see that. Hundred views already coming. Hmm. Hundred views already. I don't what. Oh views. oh yeah <laughs> cool yeah so I made a track and then I'll read the comments again sorry guys so so Livia said I got a hundred views so for those of you who are Romanian I've made a track which is a reorchestration of a traditional folk uh, song which is called Asia uh, Temlat Basma. You Romanian guys. You surely know it, and I've uh, reorchestrated. Huh? Oh, cool! So I've reorchestrated it, and it's gonna be uh, the music that plays in the inn when the characters come to Transylvania. So this is a very old folk music, and uh, it's done now. I've did I've done it with orchestral instruments, and it sounds pretty. It sounds pretty funny. We had a lot of fun with it, and it's such a huge difference between the rest of the the music in the game, which is. Um, very, very. Actually, if people want to listen to it, I'm going to mute the music a bit so you guys can listen to it. Um, yeah, so all, all my music is very, very dark and creepy, and this one is so happy it's going to be such a huge difference from the rest of the game. Yeah, so guys, you guys can listen to it if you want. It's, it's, it's a funny song. Um, Let me check the comments. Oh, boom, 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 boom. That light, a hundred bucks seems like, I mean, I know it's a lot of money to give all at once, but you've gone, you're gonna learn a lot with it and you're gonna do many things with it. So I think in the end it's worth the investment and it doesn't matter if it's small. I mean, you're trying to learn the basics. You can do that with a smaller tablet. And when, when you're going to be a pro, if you're going to have commissions and you're gonna make money, you can buy a big ass antique and your work is gonna get a lot easier. But for learning and um, being a beginner, a smaller tablet is more than enough. So yeah, it's, it's great that you have a tablet. As long as the drivers were correct and you have pre pen pressure, that's that's all you need. Yeah, it's a huge difference between drawing with a pencil and a tablet. Totally, totally agree. And uh, honestly, I told you guys I like the pencil better. It's you have a lot more, a lot more uh, accuracy in the pencil. So um, I don't know. Like in Photoshop, sometimes it um, smooths your lines, and if it doesn't, it might be too jiggly. If it smooths them, then you don't get the actual line you wanted or the actual weight, but on paper, you totally have that control, and it's better. Um, so, uh, Babushka, you said I make it look easy the way I change between brushes and layers. You mean in Photoshop? Well, that's pretty easy. It's just you don't need to know many, many different things. So, like, there are a few shortcuts. Um, there are the right brackets on the keyboard, and that's for the size of the brush. And I always have my hands on those two uh, key, key, uh, those two buttons on the keyboard. So there are the right brackets. The smaller, it's the, the left one makes your brush smaller and the, the right one ma makes your brush bigger. And then the numbers you have on your keyboard, um, one is for 10% transparency and nine is for 90% transparency and all the numbers in between. You can get different transparencies on your brush. And uh, with layers, I just have the, the layers open here in, in my Photoshop and I just go through them. And I usually work with the um, the option, which is uh, when you select. I don't I don't remember the exact options, but I can 
show you guys. So when I click on a layer, it selects that layer and I can automat automatically draw on it. Like maybe it hates that layer, but <clears throat> I find it to that it works. Great. So I can show you guys. This is a drawing I made for for a co a colleague, a co-worker today. He wanted a cartoonization. Yeah, so when I work, here's my Photoshop and I have my brush. And uh, where's that option? Oh, it should be here. So it's auto select should be on. I, oh, you can't see. Damn it. Just one second. Yeah, so there we have it. So this button, that button should be on. And when you have that button on, that means when you click on a layer, it automatically selects that layer. Now, this can be confusing sometimes because you, when you have multiple layers stacked on top of each other and there are different transparencies, it's always going to select a layer on top. But for the most times, I find that it works for me. Like for Livy, Livy hates it and he has to find the layers in the menu over here. And the menu is. No, I'm just saying that you don't work with auto select on layers and that I love it. So Livy finds auto select on, in Photoshop. So Livy just finds the layers here, but since I don't rename my layers and they're just layer 18 and layer 16, I never know which one is it. For me, it's much better to just work like that, you know. Now here I've merged it all on one layer so I can really show you, but um, I had a group before. So I can just hide these layers. And this was the original drawing in my group. So here I can just take one, one layer and see, work with it. So I can just click one and then. And as I said, I can increase the, the size of my brush with these buttons, and I always have my hands on them. And um, what else do I use? Oh yeah, I use space, and when, when you activate space, then you get this little hand on, on your mouse, and that means you can dr drag your drawing like that. And to zoom in and out, you have to press Control plus and Control minus. So this is basically all that I'm, I'm using five, five buttons on my keyboard. I'm using space to move around the drawing, control plus to zoom in, and minus to zoom out, and to make my brush smaller or bigger. Now again, I could use B, for example, when I'm on the brush, but usually here I don't work with erasers. Oh, and I use uh, Alt. When you use Alt, you can color pick whatever color you want from your drawing. And then it jumps back to, to your brush. So it's pretty simple. You don't need to know so many things. And the brushes that I'm using, I really love the brushes that come with Photoshop. And these are, if you go here, you could go to uh, where are they? dry media brushes. They come with Photoshop. You don't have to download them from anywhere. And they're great. And I uh, can show you guys. You can make a new layer. So I think there are the ones on top. So here's one of the brushes. And look what a nice texture it's got. So I use this brush a lot in my drawing, especially for line work. I really love this textury feel. You know, that makes it look uh, like traditional medium and not Photoshop. And it's got multiple brushes. So this is for inking. Like if I want to do, um, if I want to color something, I use this brush. and. Uh, I can use it on different opacities and get all of these cool textures I like. And uh, there are more brushes here, so with different sorts of textures. And again, this comes with Photoshop and it's pretty awesome. But um, one of the main brushes I use is actually from a pack that it's free. And um, here is like the brush I'm using for inking, uh, for putting color on paper. Look at that nice <laughs> texture. And this is for drawing lines and doing sketches. And these brushes, I can link them up to you guys. Um, if I find them now. So, I mean, just you guys can search for them. So they are called, so there's this guy. <laughs> I'll just send a message. Yes, so there's this guy and he has Awesome, awesome, absolutely awesome drawings. And he has, uh, if you go on his um, Facebook page, you can find the brushes. You can find the link to download his brushes from, uh, from one of his images. I think he has like an image somewhere around on his profile with free brushes and just download the brushes from, 
brushes from there. And this guy is really, really amazing. He does amazing drawings and he's been such an inspiration for me. Um, okay. So it's not harder. If it looks easy, it, it, it's because it is easy, but uh, one thing to remember is that it's easy for me because I've done it for many years. It may not be easy for you because you're, you haven't done it, so you don't have that automatic response to do it, you know? So it's gonna become easier for you too if, if you're gonna work a lot on this. So of course, for a beginner, it, it's not easy. You have to remember so many things, but it gets a lot easier, definitely. Yeah. Um, so old rod KS, yeah, just look around for some brushes. Find Gabriel Suarez's brushes, they're pretty good. And the dry media brushes from Photoshop. It's pretty awesome too. Um, where to get brushes from? Just Google it. Just Google Photoshop brushes and you'll get a million results. And you can find so many that are free. You don't need to pay for any brushes. So you can find really, really good free brushes. And um, if you don't find them, just um, send me a message in private and I'll give you some links, okay? Because uh, I know I had some, I don't remember now all the names. I'm just saying the brushes, the brushes that I use are dry media brushes from Gabriel Suarez. Uh, uh, the brushes from Gabriel Suarez and the dry media brushes from Photoshop. Those are the main that I use. Mm. So I've never done custom brushes because, um, to be honest, it's, so, it's too complicated for me. Uh, <laughs> it's... I don't understand all the stuff in the menu that are for. So here you have, you can see you have so many options for so many things. And honestly, as I said before, you know, I, I'm trying to understand stuff. And then once I understand stuff, I can apply them and adjust them to my needs and do, be creative with stuff and do what I want. But this stuff, I, I don't understand what they do. And I don't have the time or the energy to try to understand them. So I just use the brushes that other people have made because they work for me and, and yeah. Um, yeah, and with the brushes that are whole trees and people and stuff like that, I would advise against because, you know, that's, I mean, first of all, it looks very, it looks like a pattern that you've put on your canvas. If you don't know how to use that, very, very subtle. It can just be like, you know, stamping your paper with uh, custom-made stamps and calling that your drawing. It's, it's, not, it's not yours so much, you know? And it, it can look very, 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 I don't know. It's not organic, it's the opposite. It's just putting the same tree in the same position, the same perspective over and over. You get this, this feeling that it's not drawn by a human, it's just dead. replication of an image and it, it, it's not a good effect. So I'm not saying you shouldn't use them. Use whatever you want to use to make your drawings look good. Thanks and for thank you so much for the follow. Yes, yeah, sorry, I was just, in, I was just caught up in my explanation. Thank you so much guys for the follow. So use anything that makes your life easier uh, as an artist. Uh, I'm not saying that using those brushes is cheating or anything. I'm just saying they might not look good. And I advise against stuff that don't look good. And you shouldn't, like, if, especially if you're a beginner and you learn, you shouldn't choose stuff that, um, I don't know, uh, prevents you from learning stuff that are difficult to learn, but that are going to pose a lot of problems when you're going to be a professional artist. So now if you cannot draw a tree now and you end up being an artist and never being able to draw a tree, then you cannot just rely on those brushes because you might need a tree that that's in a different perspective and then you don't have a brush for it and what will you do? You're, you're just stuck there, you know? So I recommend against using custom brushes. I mean, if there are just some random trees in the background and you could, the, if they're not the main focus, just use them if you need to save that time but don't rely on them. <clears throat> and with the textures and the patterns, again, I don't know, especially for me, I, I like that my drawings are as close to the traditional traditional paintings as or drawings as possible. So I, I don't like using photo textures because, it's not because it's cheating, it's just 
it's not the effect I'm looking for. And I appreciate and admire artists that can recreate that with actual brushes and paint and not by using any photos. They can just do that and uh, by their skill and knowledge. And that's what I'm aiming for, so I'm not relying on that. But again, if, if, no, if, if that's what you need, then go for it. It's just, it's, it's, it's a matter of personal preference. Did you change this one? Huh? Did you change this one? Yeah, it was, this was, I just wanted to show how I oh, okay. auto select. Yeah, because it looks a lot, yeah, yeah, that's, that's the stuff. Yeah, because, so you know, guys, what I do at, at the end of this drawing, so they look kind of crappy, so I'm, go I'm just going to show you guys the stuff that makes my drawings look good, and then reply to the rest of the comments. So as you can see here, I just put some plain colors and some plain, uh, some plain uh, contours for some of the features. But it still looks kind of crappy, right? And uh, this is like the phase that most artists go through and then they stop here. And that's a shame because you can add a little bit of more subtle details and that will make your drawings a million times better. So first, what I do, I just add a layer of shadow and see how this automatically makes my 2D drawing look 3D. So with this, I've added character and I've added 3, 3D depth, right? And uh, it's very important when you have a subject to study how, how the shadow hits his face because it's, it's not only the eyes and the nose and the placing of the mouth that gives him his character, but the actual how his skin is, is placed on, on his face and that placement of the skin leads to different shades, different shading, right? So you cannot use the same shading for anyone. It's different for each individual as their eyes or lips are different, right? So you have to pay a lot of attention to how shadow works specifically on that individual and not use a random custom shadow for everyone as you would not use a random custom eye for everyone when you're doing a portrait. Then I've added a layer of light. You see a very, very subtle light. Well, and I put these layers, so this one is on multiply and it's at 34% opacity. And this one is on overlay and it's at 32 opacity. So if I turn them, turn them on, it's something like that. And this is like what the normal layer would be. It's like a yellowish orange color. Put it on overlay, that means it's going to make the colors shine, right? And then reduce the opacity so that it's not so obvious. Subtle so goes a long way. And then what I do, so already it's looking a lot better than it did before, right? Already we have depth, we have character. Now here I've added just a tiny bit of details. And that means some very, very strong highlights because you don't want to use a lot of white in your paintings. Now this is, a, this is an exception because usually when I do these cartoonizations, I do them on white background because people use them for their social media and that's usually white, so I just use the white. But as a general rule in painting, you don't want to use bright pure white just use a slight grayish or yellowish or bluish white so that when you do use just a bit of white as I did here on his eyes it really stands out and it's really a really really effective detail Man, and I use so that like <laughs> and I use that white see I use that for his eyes because when you look at people's eyes I don't know if you know you cannot see them. but you have that really bright reflection because your your eyes are very shiny, right? They're wet and the light always reflects back when, like when, usually when there, when, where there's, there's light, you have that reflection in people's eyes. So you can use that in almost any, any case. And just a, a tiny speck of reflection on the nose and then another longer line to suggest the length of the nose. And why is that? Because usually our noses are much more oily and uh, their angles are in the angle that light falls upon. Right, so then you have these highlights on the eyes and the nose, which are white. And then I add a f another less, less white, uh, a less opaque white highlight on the lips because, again, lips are usually wet and that makes them glow, right? And, uh, so already with a bit of shadow and light, my drawing looks a lot more professional, a lot better. Looks like I know what I'm doing. Here is just like a random drawing made by some, someone trying to do a drawing. Here it looks like somebody knows what they're doing. So it's just like three minutes more work and look what a huge difference it makes. 
And then what I do, so here, I, again, a lot better than before. And what I do here, I just go to Control B, and that opens up. Where is it? Is it somewhere else? Never mind. I'll just use go. Oh, okay. Just go to image adjustment, and I'll go to color balance. And usually I go to highlights, and I just put some more yellows and some more reds in it. And this is too much because this has already been color adjusted. But you see what a nice effect it has. So if my character before seemed to be in shadow and all the colors are, are dull, when I do this, it's just like bright in the sunlight. Everything is so much better and makes all the colors unified, right? Because it, it adds red and yellow to everything. That means the highlights and it means the shadows and everything looks a, bit, a lot more unified. So I've done this, this is al almost done, but I'm not gonna stop here because I can do a few more tricks to make it look better. And uh, oh, here Liv, you dropped by and said, hey, this would look a lot better if you would exaggerate the shapes. And he quickly added some, some shapes and I've adjusted them. And yeah, man, it looks a lot better because this was like a more realistic approach to, to a portrait and I don't wanna do it. I wanna do a cartoon. But you know, I had my, my mindset is always to try to try to capture that person's looks and then I forget to abstract, ab abstractize, no, that's not the word, make things look abstract and exaggerate them, right? So it looks a lot better with this exaggeration. It's not realistic, but it's, n it's what I wanted. It's, I wanted a cartoony, exaggerated cartoon. So already it's looking a lot better. And then what I do, okay, is I add a couple of more details so I felt uh, I needed a couple of more details on his mustache because usually when we look at a person, we look at their eyes and at their mouth when they're talking. So this, these uh, details should be very, very well worked, right? You don't want to leave them just like, see how I've, I've done his ears. They are very, very simple and very few colors, very few details because we're not usually watching other people's ears, but we are watching their eyes their mouth and so, so we should add the most detail there and then I added uh, another layer on overlay and 37% opacity with a nice canvas texture and what this does is I don't know if you guys can see is make it look less digitally as I said I hate digitally looking drawings because I hate that Photoshop I want things to look traditional and this makes it look like it's been drawn on a piece of paper uh, with texture and then photograph and I really like the, the thing I'm not saying this is wrong I'm not saying that without the texture this is not a quality drawing but I, I prefer the more traditional looking drawing than the digitally looking one and then I added another texture, Fresh but this one for the ever -growing was, was with highlight on, dead. so <laughs> together they make this nice traditional looking drawing. And that's about it. The rest was sketch. So this was the sketch. The sketch I usually put on multiply and I put it on a very small opacity. So uh, this was the sketch. And yeah, it's it's very important to take your time with the sketch and don't hurry into doing colors because if you've done any any minor mistake it's gonna be a lot more harder to correct once you've done the colors and the details than just do it right from the sketch point of view so as you can see the sketch is much much simpler than the final drawing that's because you always have the ability to add more but you want that the structure you have to be correct and you can check that by see by flipping the drawing like that because usually when you flip the drawing you can see the anatomy uh, mistakes you might have made because mm, maybe something looks good this way but when I flip it around dead. it's just you can see that I don't know something is way higher or lower than it should be and there's another thing that when you're looking at your drawing too much you start to get accustomed to it and it starts to look right to you even though it's wrong and then if you take a break from it and then if, I don't know, go home and rest for a night and look at it again in the morning you'll see the mistakes so it's very important especially if you're a beginner artist don't don't uh, make your drawings final until you've given yourself a few hours or a few days to forget them and then 
check them out again after that break because you will see so many more mistakes than you've done in the first time. Your eyes get accustomed to the mistake and you don't see it. So that's why flipping is good because you see the same drawing but you see it in a different perspective and you can spot the mistakes more easily. But this works a couple of times, it won't work for good. So it's very important to take that break. So this was the sketch and uh, this was the drawing. Yeah. So again, I forgot, I mean, I didn't forget, I just started talking about stuff and I didn't read the comments. So let me check and get to the current comments. <laughs> oh, my lines good, look good. Thank you so much. That like, well, I have a lot of experience because, again, guys, I'm doing line art for animation, and that means lining millions of drawings. I think there were millions of drawings. It's hundreds and hundreds of drawing every weeks, every week, every. I think it's thousands of drawings every month. So. With a six year working experience, I think I've done millions of drawings. So I have a lot of experience lining up drawings and um, the confidence you get is just a lot of work and a lot of practice. Um, so I told you where I got my brushes from. I told you it's the basic dry brush pack from Photoshop and the Gabriel Suarez one. Yeah, if you, a lot of people that like don't use auto select because they drag stuff. But I, I mean, if I dragged something and it's wrong, I can just undo it and then try to grab the other thing. You know, like the initial thing that I want. For me, it works. It's yeah. Photoshop tutorials, yes. Uh, Michael, you're curious what brush gets through that beard. <laughs> Oh my. That now. Yeah, I'm sorry, we just kept talking and talking and I didn't have the chance to... <laughs> this is a dialogue, not a monologue. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. How could you? Yes, yeah, basic Photoshop brushes, like the, the two basic ones that you get when you open Photoshop are horrible, don't use them. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it needs shading highlights. Yes, it was overlay and multiply. Yes. Man, I'm sorry, I'm just reading the comments right, right now. <laughs> I'm sorry, we just kept talking, I didn't, I had, I'm sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. So that light, don't be scared of drawing entire faces. Just do a lot of, a lot of uh, structure. Like the way you read, if you, if you have time, read Andrew Loomis's book, um, Drawing the head and, head and Hands. And then y you will learn how to draw the basic structure of the skull. And that's very important before you start drawing real people because unless you know what the actual 3D shapes are in a skull and Unless you get that, that very, very easy feeling of it's, is it correct, it's not correct, then don't, don't get into portraits. It's going to be a mess. It's, so first, master the simple things. And that's basically just a sphere that's cut out to the edges, and then you have like a box for your jaw. And you have to be able to draw that in every perspective before trying to draw real people, which is a lot more complicated, because you have to take care of, of the anatomy to be right but then you have to take care of the features so that they look like that pe person and it's a lot more complicated um. <laughs> oh Crafted, crafted artillery, thank you so much. Thank you so much. So yeah, I'm so happy that, uh, yeah, I've got a style because trust me, I didn't set up to have my style. It was not uh, not a decision I've made. It was just something that happened. It's, no, I'm just like different artists. I watch their art a lot and I'm, 
I get inspired by some of the things they do and I take this from one artist and that from another one and just it's it all summed up and it's become my style I guess because a lot of people say they recognize my style and it's pretty cool uh, yeah I'm so happy I'm so happy you guys like it and uh, I'm constantly changing myself because I'm constantly learn learning new things and finding new artists and getting inspiration from them. So I think style is not a <clears throat> not a, a thing that you get and then it stays the same. I think it constantly evolves and hope it gets better, not worse. Um, yes, placing the eyes, it's not actually not that hard. I can show you guys a quick tutorial on how to place eyes. And, let me read through all the comments and I'll show you guys a quick tutorial on how to draw a face and where to place the features. Uh, yeah, so you first have to start with drawing a circle. Right, so that's the first thing you wanna master. And after you're drawn a circle, you have to master drawing a straight line and then you have to master drawing a box in perspective. Then you have to master drawing a cylinder in perspective and then all of the stuff com becomes complicated, more, com more complex, but you know, once you've mastered these things, you just add to your knowledge base, and it's it's not so hard. <laughs> uh, if I ever, <laughs> I didn't get to that comment. <laughs> if I ever use the mixing it's funny brush it's true. It's funny it's true. in Photoshop, yeah, I just found out about this cool brush. I've never knew about it, so it's um. So I want to I wanna reply to all the comments and then I'll get to the newer ones. So I have the mixer brush tool. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about. And I just found out about this. I didn't know, so guys, I've been working in Photoshop for six years and I've never knew about this brush and now it changed my life. It's I amazing. Know either. I've been working in Photoshop so for check this out. So. You select this brush from here. It's a mixer brush tool, right? And you can select any brush you want with it. So. Let's see what I, I will go with this one, right? And what this brush does, I don't know what's so fun. It's too, too much to read. I'll get to the funny part later. Oh. Yeah. So check this out, guys. Check what this brush does. Isn't that cool? So what it does is it blends color, colors like it would. You can take any brush you want, and the effect is. I don't know what's so funny, Liu. Sorry, Pimsy said people aren't symmetrical, and Michael said I can attest to that. My front is completely different from my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you can use any brushes you want. And look at what cool effects you get. So this is like, man, you can get like real oil effects with this brush. But again, you have to know when to use them and how to use them sparingly because if too much, like see how smooth, how smooth the blending is, you can get that Photoshop look and that looks bad. But if you just use the right amount of it, you can get some pretty kick-ass effects. So the answer to that is yes, I have started to use them and I've gotten some amazing results and I'm so happy with it, but I um, still have to work on it because I'm not so sure. So I can show you guys. Uh, just let me open up my art station. Um, here are some of my drawings. So I think with this drawing, it was the first time, uh, it was the first time, here it is. I I started to, to use the mixer brush tool and man, I just love the texture I got. Like. It, to me, this kind of looks a bit in some places, like see how nice the colors blend, like it would be in an oil painting, like look at here on the leaves, and I couldn't have done that without the mixer brush tool, so I couldn't have mixed the colors so well without using that, and I was so happy, it was easier. I think this took me like 20 minutes to do. It was such a quick painting, and I really think one of my best, and I was really happy to, to have found that brush, but again, you have to use that sparingly. So here I used some more mixer brush tool and I really loved, like, look at this effect. So I think the, the key is to contrast the high detail, see how detailed and textured this part is with the blended smooth part of, of where I use the texture, the mixer brush tool, see? And uh, I've done many, many still lives because 
Yeah, I wanna. So this yeah took me like 20 minutes to really wanna learn how to create quick and powerful colors and uh, textures and blendings. And I I think this works well with best with still life because if you want to do like a bigger painting with mm, I don't know a landscape or something, so much more detail it gets a lot harder to to master that. But here when you have like a simple, you have two spheres and a plane that is bent and two two cylinders, it's much more easier to understand the shadow, the light and the highlights and how to mix brush. So yeah, here is my art station. You guys you can follow me. It's uh, artstation.com that slash my name. <laughs> And uh, yeah, you can check out my, my paintings and my drawings. And let me go through the next comments. Yes, I am so far behind. I think I've gotten even further away behind. Mm. <laughs> yes, Michael, exactly. That was so I'll show you that light. I'll show you in a second how to make a skull. <laughs> now I got to the funny comment. I can't laugh about it anymore. Leave you spoiled it. <laughs> okay, okay. Finally getting to the end of the comments, yay. <laughs> Thank you, that light. Yo, let me, like, last year I really wanted to do some Inktober drawings and I said, man, I cannot do that. I so last year I couldn't have done it. I was so much crappier at the drawing. I I knew so much, so little, so less than I do now, and I didn't I didn't feel up to it. But this year I'm totally. I said I'm gonna kick in, and yeah, it really helped that I started doing some ink drawings uh, on holiday this this summer, and I took my sketchbook with, with me and some pen and ink, and I really had fun with it. But in order to start doing these drawings, I've done many many houses like this like these ones you know just taking uh, pictures from google and um, trying to draw the perspective correctly and the shapes and try to build like a visual library of architecture and everything because that's pretty important so again if you look at uh, if you look at houses and buildings like they would be cubes and cylinders um, with different shapes and pyramids and stuff it gets a lot easier to draw them. And then you just add the details. So it's so important to understand the basic shapes behind everything. And um, yeah, I promise you guys, it's five o'clock. I'm, I'm gonna let Nico stream soon. But I promise you guys a quick tutorial on how to draw faces. And uh, if this window would minimize, yeah, there we go. So I'm gonna show you guys. Then I'm gonna let Nico stream because uh, it's five o'clock and it's Thursday. And uh, yeah, for those of you who are new, Nick is our uh, programmer and uh, he's doing development streams for our game called Give Us a Cthulhu Adventure. So hang out with Nick if you want to see how games are made behind the scenes. Yeah. No, I won't. I'll just put the image, I know. Um, Oh no, that like I'm sure you're good. And uh, man, I, I I used to suck a lot, but then I started drawing those buildings, and I drew a lot of buildings. And now I don't suck so much because I've done a lot of those drawings. But yeah, if you haven't done it, don't worry. I mean, it's it's natural that you suck at it when you first try it. It's completely natural. Um, okay, so in order to draw, is call. It's very simple. It's very simple. So first, you you need to to be able to draw a circle, right? No, it doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but just make it round. The band. Uh, those are many lines. Uh, what? The band. 
No, the skull. <laughs> what? Perfect circle of bed. Oh my god, never mind. Yeah, man. No. Okay, so once you've drawn like a circle, you have to look at it as a sphere, right? So let's see, where do we want? Let's say our character is looking that way, right? So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to draw like a middle axis and I'm going to extend it down. So this comes around the circle like that, right? And it comes down like that. Now it's, this is the middle axis. This is the middle axis of my face. And then I'm going to draw the brow line. And I'm going to draw that here. So what we have here, so this goes around like that right so you have this sphere and you divide it into you have a middle axis and a middle axis horizontally and one vertically this is the brow line this is like the line where my brows and this is exactly in the middle of the circle and now from here on you just have to extend this and make a small jaw and if you want to make things complicated, well, it's not necessary. You could imagine that this part is being cut and this is straight, right? So we have like a line, like a curved line here, but then it is straight like that. And we have the bra line, which is in the middle of the circle, middle of the sphere. And then you take this size and divide it in three. So you take the size that you have here in the circle, the upper side, Double that and you triple that and then you have like I've made mine a bit longer then you have The length of the skull whoops And I've been drawing on on my white layer So Once you have that You have the jaw here and this this part so this is divided in three equal halves Right. I'm just gonna write that down. This is a brow line, and right here would be the line for the eyes. And right here, okay, we divide this in three parts, two, and right here on the upper line would be the the line for the mouth and the eyes should go exactly here and this would be where the eyebrows go and this would be where the nose is and here if you take the line from the eyes and bring it down like that on the plane is where you should have the ears and that's about it you've made yourself a nice now, if, you, if we want this in another perspective, we can draw it in another perspective. Let's say we want it facing that way and a bit low. So we're going to divide this plane like that. What are you doing, Colin Farrell? Dumping. Colin Farrell, that's some dangerous dumping. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. So we have the middle line, as I said, but since the character is looking down, this is a bit in perspective. And we just draw the jawline. Right? So this is the brow line. This is the middle of the face. Here we will have the ear. Like that. And now if we divide this, this would be where his hair ends, and we have to divide this in three. But since this is affected by perspective, this is going to be smaller than this one and then the other one. And here we will have the nose. And here we will have the eyes. And here we need to divide this in three and put the mouth. And the eyes go around. Like, and there are many, many other measurements you can be aware of. Let's see. This is a bit tricky. And since this character is looking down, like everything is going to be curved that way because this is the way this is bent, right? 
and the mouse too. And there we have another character looking down. And if we want him to look up, then we do the same thing. Draw a circle. But here is where it gets a bit tricky, so I'm not gonna do such an extreme angle because we have to see the chin. Let's just make him look like this way. Again, an axis, middle axis for the eyebrows, one for the eyes, one for the nose, and then you add the eyes here. And this is on the third space, you add the mouth, and that's about it. And this is a very funny looking man, it's like an alien. But that's about it. So if you read Andrew Loomis's book, he's going to teach you whoops, everything you need to know about this, this thing. And that's it for me because it's already been, it's past five and Nico should start the stream. So thank you so much for watching. Let me just check the last comment. <sighs> yeah, so you have to learn that, like you have to learn to apply the proportions, you know, from the face. You need to learn to apply them in 3D space. Because once you understand what the face is composed of, like the circle, which is, which is a sphere anyway, it's a circle anyway you looked, at, you looked at it, and you can divide it any way you want, and then you can put on top of it the skull, then you are able to do that in every and any angle at all, right? Because it's, it's the same everywhere. Even if you do it from the front, even if you do it from the side, or from the back. <laughs> it sounded dirty. So this is the brow line, the eye line, here is where the nose is, here is where the mouth is, here is where the ears are. That's, that's all you need to know. Um. Thank you, Babushka. There are so many, so many others. And uh, yeah, so if you don't have the time to read Andrew Loomis because like his books are 100 years old, <laughs> I'm not kidding, and they're great books, but uh, like they're really long because I think 100 years ago people had time to read them and now they don't. But you can watch tutorials. You can watch, you can uh, just search for Proko on YouTube and he has a ton of tutorials on how to draw people, how to draw faces, how to do caricatures, how to draw the face from any angle, how to draw a gesture, how to draw anything. He's very, has tutorials on anatomy. He's such, such an amazing teacher and I've learned so much from him and totally recommend to check out his channel. And um, don't pay for any of those tutorials. Just like <laughs> that, like no, but he got. Oh, okay then. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Just watch watch Broco's tutorials that are free, and he also has paid tutorials. But if you like them, I mean, all the important stuff is in his free tutorials, and he has some extra stuff in the paid tutorials, but. Um, I don't think it's, I mean, you can pay. If you really like him, you can pay. I mean, he's a really great artist, and if you can support him doing those awesome tutorials, then it's totally worth it. And um, thank you, Flimsy Hen and Michael. I hope I didn't bore you guys with all my technical talk about the drawing. Um, and that light, another advice, don't overanalyze stuff. It's, you need practice, not overanalyzation. So you need to draw a million faces before you can effortlessly do a good face. It's just, it's not, it's not that you don't know the, the, like the, the technicalities behind it like I used to know. It's about the practice, you need to practice. Even if you know everything you need to know, that won't make you draw well, you need to practice. <laughs> yes, cool Michael. Yeah. <laughs> so, Bye, Babushka. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and stay tuned for Niku. He's going to do some development stream, and if you like what we're doing, follow us. Uh, we do daily art streams, daily development streams. I mean, not daily art streams. They're just three times a week, but daily streams nevertheless. It's either art or development, so stay tuned for Niku, and thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys. Peace and love, craft. <laughs>